Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Panasonic TX40JX850 LED TV. Now this model is available in four different sizes. So it's available in this size, which is the 40 inch. There's the 50, 58 or 65 inch. Uh, all the features and benefits I'll show you will be the same, uh, but for the purpose of this video I'll be showing you the smaller 40 inch. Uh, now what I want to do today is to show you around the TV some of the features and benefits that it offers. But all I'd normally say is just before we start, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. Uh, what I do is I talk about things like household appliances mainly. Uh, there's normally a bit of tech in there, things like vacuum cleaners. So there's quite a lot to normally talk about, but just give us a quick subscribe then we'll make a start. So the big range of TVs that Panasonic make, uh, but the JX850 range is really towards the top end of the range of the LED models before you start to go into the OLED. Uh, but what I want to do is, first of all, uh, I did mention that this TV comes in four different sizes. Now what you need to do is to measure to make sure that it will fit in the space. Uh, now the only reason I mention that, because in our showroom we have quite a, quite a few TVs, uh, and one of the common questions is will it fit on my stand? Uh, that's something that a lot of people, I suppose a lot of people have had a stand before, they've got to already got a piece of furniture or it could be a glass stand from a previous TV, so really you, you need to make sure it fits on there uh, before you start looking into any of the technology. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just measure the, first of all the TV itself. So on this one you're looking at 90 centimetres or around 35 and a half inches wide. Uh, the height of it I suppose going to the, going down to the base so you're looking at about 57 centimetres or about 22 and a half inches. Uh, so it's a really nice slim TV uh, over the years. Um, it's not just Panasonic, all brands have made the, the screen, um, I suppose, a lot bigger compared to the frame on the outside. Uh, so it's really nice to see that there's a, a very little uh, frame on the outside of the TV. Uh, I did just mention about the stand. Now that's something that does crop up a lot. Uh, so as far as the, the, the width on the stand here is 53 centimetres or just under 21 inches and the depth of the stand is about 24 centimetres and uh, about nine and a half inches. So that's one of the main things. Uh, there's no point buying a huge TV if it's not going to fit in the space. So what I'll do is I'll just show you around the back of the TV um, just really to give you an idea of the connections um, and I suppose how slim it is. I did mention about the, the frame and you can see here that uh, at the top here the overall side of the TV again is very slim. Uh, as far as slimness, uh, if you, uh, I suppose a lot of people want to wall mount TVs now. Uh, you've got the standard visa fitting here, so this is just a 2x200 fitting, uh, which is really good. Um, not all manufacturers make it this easy to wall mount the TVs, uh, so I'm, I'm really pleased that Panasonic have done this. Uh, they've not always made it this easy. Uh, I think they've learned over the years that uh, you know a lot of people do want to wall mount them. They want to use universal brackets. You don't want to have to buy a very expensive uh, bracket. Uh, so again, two by two hundred, nice and easy. Uh, as far as the, you got the mains connection here. Uh, fortunately, what Panasonic do is they use a right angle mains lead anyway. So again, if you're going to wall mount it, then that's that's already solved for you. And if we just come around here, uh, hopefully you can see these. Uh, we've got a good range of other connections. So we've got three HDMI connections. So a couple on the side and one on the back here. And you've got a couple of USBs as well. Uh, I am pleased that they put a USB on the side. Uh, I must say I've got a TV wall mounted at home. And on the odd occasion we want to put a USB in the side, then uh, I must say if they were both on the back, it would be quite frustrating. Uh, so that's very good and clearly you've got the aerial connection on the side here as well. Uh, the other connections on the back, uh, so you've got the digital audio connection and then you've got the AV in as well. And then finally we've got the Ethernet connection just at the bottom there. Uh, that's I suppose mainly an advantage if you wanted to hardwire the internet. Uh, some people, way if you struggle for, for Wi-Fi across the property, then it's normally a good idea to hardwire the internet just with a uh, an ethernet cable so again it's good that they put it on the side and also you've got the common out on common interface slot at the top there so when it comes to operating the tv this is the remote control that panasonic are using uh, it's slightly different to normal uh, if you've had panasonic tvs for for several years you'll know there's a, a fairly standard design that panasonic normally stick to uh, but it's quite refreshing to see that they've changed it 
uh, you've got, again, there's, the, there's a lot to go at. Uh, first of all, I suppose it stands out. You've got the uh, different app buttons. First of all, you've got My App. Um, and what that does is that will, if there's a, a certain app that you tend to use a lot, then you can just save it there. Uh, you've also got the main ones, things like Prime Video, YouTube, Netflix. But as far as the rest of remote control, it is very easily laid out. Uh, so you'll have the, the menu options in the middle here. Uh, it's normally where you just toggle left, right, up and down. Uh, then you've got the volume control, just on the left hand side here, channel up and down. And you've got all the buttons at the bottom. Uh, now Panasonic are pretty well known for making good uh, remote controls that are I suppose, popular with people like the elderly. Uh, mainly because things like the buttons are nice and big, uh, the number, everything's well laid out. So to turn the TV on, it's really easy, you've just got the on and off button at the top here. Uh, what I'm really pleased to say is that Panasonic have actually got an on and off button. Uh, now, I know it sounds very odd, probably very strange to mention it, but not all manufacturers have it. And it's something that a lot of people like to do, just to turn the TV off at night. Now there is a huge amount of technology within this TV. Uh, clearly it's a 4K TV being one of the premium models in the LED range that Panasonic offer. Uh, so it's a 4K HDR. Uh, now this also has something called a HDR Bright Panel Plus screen. And what it will do is it will actually adjust the picture depending on what you're watching. So if you're watching something like this which is very slow moving uh, but there's a lot of detail in it, uh, then that will be very different to if you're watching say a football match where you've got the players moving across uh, the pitch very quickly and you've got cameras panning very quickly across the pitch as well. And what Panasonic also use is something called a HTX AI processor and that just really enhances the picture and that's helping to work with the panel. Uh -huh. There are so many different things that people use their TVs for now. Uh, games consoles are another popular option that people use their TVs. Um, also if you're watching uh, things like Netflix then a lot of programs are recorded in 4K now. Uh, it's not just Netflix, uh, across different streaming devices, uh, even if you're going to watch, say, a Blu-ray disc, then a lot of the content is very, very detailed. So having things like the, uh, the HCX AI processor really helps to adjust the picture depending on what you're watching. On this TV as well, you have got something called Freeview Play. Uh, so as long as you provide a Freeview signal to the TV, so you do need the aerial connected, um, then what you can do is you can get things like the catch-up TV services. Uh, you have got the Freeview Play button just at the top here on the remote. Um, I won't go into detail about how it all works because that's a pretty standard I suppose across a lot of TVs. Um, but what it will do is it will give you the option to look for things like box sets. Uh, you can search for a certain program if there's one that you wanted to watch. Um, also you've got other recommended. So there's quite a lot you can do with this through the Freeview Play option. Uh, you have also got the guide, and when you press the guide, uh, I'm again, I'm really pleased to see that Panasonic have kept this kind of design. Uh, they've used this design for probably a couple of years now, um, and it's something that a lot of customers do like because it's nice and easy to read. Uh, sometimes what manufacturers will try and do is to cram as much in as possible so it makes the writing quite small, uh, but not everyone wants that, especially if you uh, if, if your sight isn't that brilliant then you want something that's just nice and easy to read uh, but what happens is first of all you can skip forward so if there's a certain program that you want to watch later on or another day then just use the cursor up and down left and right just to find which program it is uh, and you can set a timer to remind you when it's going to be on uh, also what it does is it just gives you a brief overview as to I suppose what time the program's on and also what it's about. Uh, what you can also do, and it's got Freeview Play at the top here, um, if you press the left button here then what it will do is it will actually go back in time. So if there's a program that you wanted to watch and you've just missed it, uh, say within the last couple of days, then you just press the left button and you can actually search for that program there. So, so when you press the home button on the remote control then it just brings up a, an overview of some of the popular apps that you can use. Um, what you can do is you can move these around if you wanted to. So if there's certain ones that you wanted to use. Uh, I know you, I mentioned earlier you've got the uh, couple at the top here. I suppose these tend to be the popular apps that people use. Uh, but there could be one on here that you tend to use a lot. Uh, it could be a, say a sport one or it could be a weather app that you use. Uh, so you have got the 
the My App option. Uh, but again, you can set all these up if you want to. Uh, if you also go into the apps, just on the left hand side here, then it just takes you through the apps that are uh, pre-installed on the TV. Uh, you do have the option to download other apps if you want to. Uh, there's, there's a huge amount you can do with this. Uh, so you've got other things like streaming services, things like Deezer. You do also have the option for voice control with the TV. Uh, so if you do use either Google Assistant or Amazon's Alexa, then you do actually have a little microphone within the remote control. Uh, so you can actually talk to the TV and control it through your remote control, which again is a good idea. When it comes to changing some of the settings on the TV, it's nice and easy. If you just press the menu button at the top there, then that just brings up the bar on the bottom. Uh, there's quite a bit you can do, uh, but just to quickly show you, you've got the, the picture mode, so you can change the picture settings. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that, but what it's doing is it's changing it between, so you've got things like true cinema, custom where you can adjust it yourself, sport mode, uh, filmmaker, cinema, normal. So there's quite a lot of different settings. Um, and then you've got the sound. Uh, on this TV, you have got the, the surround sound, as they call it. Uh, so you've got stadium surround. Uh, you've also got Dolby Atmos as well. So if you've got, a, uh, say, a Dolby Atmos feed coming into the TV, then uh, just select the, the Dolby surround. Uh, you can also manually select things like the music uh, standard, so there's a lot of different options that you can select on here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that quick video on the Panasonic TX40JX850. Please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video, leave any comments below. I'd always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video. I know there will be some people that will be a little bit disappointed that I didn't go into all the nitty gritty detail about all the picture and sound quality details and uh, Blu-ray demonstrations, things like that, but I just want to give you an overview of what the TV can offer. Anyway, thanks for watching.